Once upon a time, there was a magical university tucked away in the leafy green suburb of St. Lucia. The university was on a very old and vast campus that wrapped around the banks of the Brisbane River and inside the smallest sandstone tower there worked a lecturer wizard, Mellon. Mellon wasn't your run-of-the-mill lecturer wizard, but he believed that his students were creative creatures and given the opportunity and support, were able to contribute more than just essays to society. Setting out to prove this, he began to devise a very different kind of assessment task. Meanwhile, sitting at a computer far, far away was Olaf. Olaf was just your average snowman business student. He had a part-time job at Green Dots Bank, and just like everybody else, felt vulnerable and lonely at times. He had many friends and played soccer and mixed netball, but he felt like he needed part of something bigger, something more meaningful. With the university break nearly over, Olaf was rushing to choose his subjects for next semester when he stumbled upon a course titled Social Enterprise. The course description read, students will learn how to create significant and sustainable social impact in areas of community need. This sounded a whole lot better than applied market research, and so he enrolled in it. A few weeks later, Olaf found himself sitting in Merlin's social enterprise class next to Cinderella, Minnie Mouse, and Belle. But what Merlin said next would change Olaf's world forever. He said, your assignment this semester, which will account for 100% of your grade, is to create a project that positively impacts the community. There are, however, two rules. The first, it has to be sustainable. The second, it has to address a particular social inequality. As you can probably tell from Olaf's face, he was pretty stoked. This was exactly what he was looking for. But there was only one problem. Because Olaf had lived a relatively good life, free of worry or struggle, he didn't actually know what social inequality really meant. So he went to get help from the smartest and most magical person he knew, his mum. Elsa was a great teacher and knew everything. And when he explained to her the assignment, she thought it was a good idea to introduce Olaf to one of her very special students named Isla. Shortly after Isla was born, she had a seizure, which caused the parts of her brain that facilitate cognitive and emotional learning to suffer severe damage. By the age of three, most children were learning how to walk, talk, and socialize. But Isla spent these early years curled up in a ball, having seizure after seizure. Over time, medication and steroids eased the seizures away and helped her to develop physically and cognitively. And by the time she was eight, she was able to run and play and dance. Isla's parents explained to Olaf how she just loved to dance, but unfortunately, every dance teacher she'd had never really understood her needs, and some had even shouted at her. The next week back in Millen's classroom, Olaf shared Isla's story with Cinderella, Belle and Minnie, and they too felt compelled to do something. After a quick brainstorm, the four of them, with the help of their good friend Angelina Ballerina, decided that their project would be to create a ballet school for children like Isla, who one parent later explained are beautiful snowflakes, like any child. What happened next, no one saw coming. Isla told her friends, and her friends told their friends, and before you knew it, the ballet class was full of snowflakes. Some who wore gumboots, some who used wheels, and some who couldn't hear, see, or speak. But what they all had in common was that given the opportunity and support, they could all become ballerinas. A year passed and the ballet school had taught over 55 snowflakes of every shape and size you could imagine. They'd even invited Rapunzel and Pocahontas to teach for them. However, all was not well. For over the course of the year, they had lost half of their snowflakes, who had seemingly melted back into the community from whence they came. Understanding that social enterprise was balancing social impact and business, they'd expected to lose some snowflakes, as any business with customers would have. But 50% seemed awfully high, and it's hard to be sustainable if your snowflakes keep melting away. So for the next six months, whilst Angelina continued teaching, Olaf set out on a quest to find out why. It was more of a part-time quest because he had to continue studying and juggle a part-time job. Olaf searched high and low and one day found himself in the suburb of Logan. Clearly, he had gotten very lost. <laughs> Just as he was about to give up and use Google Maps to find his way home, 
he heard chanting coming from a nearby industrial shed. Out of curiosity, he walked over and realised he'd stumbled across an e-waste recycling plant. Being passionate about social problems, including that of recycling, he peered into the shed, and what he saw he could not believe. There were some workers with disabilities, some who had been long-term unemployed, and some youth at risk who were on community service orders. Suddenly, out of nowhere, appeared Shrek. Shrek offered Olaf a tour of the workshop. Basically, people who didn't need their old technology, computers, printers, laptops, TVs, etc., gave it to the shed, who then dismantled it and separated it into the different grades of motherboards, metals, and plastics. They then sold each of these commodities to various ethical recycling plants. For each commodity, even plastic, has a value. Not only were they diverting electronic waste from landfill, they were also helping each other. The kid whose society deemed a juvenile offender was working alongside another kid with a disability to pull apart a printer. As they neared the back of the shed, they came across a group who were fixing bikes. Shrek explained that somehow someone had mistakenly given them a bike instead of electronic waste, and one of the guys who'd been doing the e-waste thing for a while asked to do a new project. He proposed that they take up old bikes, fix them up, and sell them at a very low cost to people who couldn't afford public or private transport to get to work. There were two gleaming bicycles on display with big handlebars and laptop cases hanging over the rear wheel. Shrek saw Olaf's puzzled expression and explained that an electrical engineer going through a midlife crisis had come in and taken the old laptop batteries, of which they had plenty, and attached it to the bicycle, turning it into an e-bike, capable of travelling up to 40 kilometres an hour. Shrek explained the problem that they had was they needed a more aesthetically pleasing way of attaching the laptop batteries to the bike, and so he led Olaf over to a table with two 3D printers on it. That one printed that one, and they both print the custom components we use to attach the laptop batteries to the bikes. Now, most fairy tales would break in a song right about now, but Shrek didn't teach Olaf any good e-waste songs, so let's just recap what he saw that day. The guy who was nonverbal six months ago had since learned to buy lunch and catch the bus by himself with the help of a juvenile offender. And they were being supervised by a guy who hadn't worked in 10 years to fix up bikes for people who couldn't afford transport. On top of that, they were also making e-bikes using a 3D printer they then used to print another 3D printer as well as steering rubbish that would have been sent to landfill towards ethical recycling plants. And as amazing as all this was, Olaf suddenly remembered why he was there. He looked around. Shrek, what is it that makes all these people stick around? Shrek handed over an information flyer the size of a postcard. 2,275 hours of paid employment, 5,500 hours of volunteer work performed by 120 people, and 31,100 kilograms of electronic waste diverted from landfill every three months. But what did these numbers mean? Well. It meant that everybody felt like they were contributing towards a common goal. Sure, only these numbers can tell part of the story, but what they showed everyone was what the common purpose was. Through a process of trial and error, Shrek had found a way of engaging people who society in many ways had written off and given them the opportunity to contribute their skills in a meaningful and collaborative way. Olaf left that day deep in thought. How could he show current and future snowflakes what their common purpose was? And when you start asking questions like that, he knew he had to go back to the very beginning to consult with Merlin. Because of Olaf and the team's project, Merlin was able to prove that students were indeed able to contribute more than just essays to society. And he was happy to continue to support them in any way he could. When Olaf asked Merlin how to show the snowflakes what their purpose in the ballet school was, he replied, you have to change the way in which you view them. You see, the snowflakes aren't just objects for impact. They are also valuable human beings, capable of impacting others. Together, Olaf, Mellon, and the ballet teachers began to refine the ballet program, making sure to not only give the snowflakes opportunity, but also enable them to have a larger impact in the community around them. Slowly, new activities were introduced, 
that cultivated the snowflake social skills and ability to initiate impact. For example, instead of the simple act of the teachers setting up the lily pads or handing out flowers, the snowflakes started to, practicing virtues such as service and kindness, impacting the snowflakes around them as well as their families back at home. Since given the assignment almost two years ago, Olaf discovered that people need to feel part of something that is greater than themselves. For the workers at the e-waste plant, they were all working to reduce the amount of electronic waste sent to landfill, but they were also part of a supportive team and were learning from each other. And as for Olaf and the snowflakes, it was a matter of feeling as though they belonged to a community, and they were capable of creating impact, not just being impacted.